let's look at hypothesis testing. Hopefully you already watched the first video that I guess we could put that this is a gallon of milk, right, the price. And so the first part, we did a confidence interval for all the United, all the United States, <laughs> for all the states in the U.S. Well, now what if we picked two, okay, two different states here, and we took a sample within those states, and I have Seattle and Atlanta, and we would kind of like to see is there a difference between these two states? So in other words, is there a difference? Does the mean price of milk, gallon of milk in Seattle, is that typically more than Atlanta or are they pretty much the same? So the null hypothesis is saying they're equal. Now, again, as you know, with, with statistics, not, nothing is ever equal, right? But we can, we can actually come up with a level of significance, and that's what they always give you as an alpha value. And based on that alpha value, we can test our hypothesis, and that's what we want to do. All right, so this can be a pretty long and drawn out hypothesis test with a formula, or you can use Excel. Hey, let's use Excel. So Excel has under the data and the data analysis tool, this Z test to sample for means. And we're gonna do a Z because we have enough, remember the, the magic number 30 or more data values. And so I can actually use this test. What I, I'm going to click on it first and just kind of look and see. Let me get rid of these values that I put in here before. And just kind of look and see the kind of stuff that it wants. So I know that this is my variable one range. I know this is my variable two range. The mean difference, the hypothesis, says there's no difference. So that would be zero. But notice I need the variances. So I just wanted you to see why I'm going to actually compute those variances. So let's get out of that. We'll get back to it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find the variance. Oops, I'm typing variance. VAR for the Seattle people. And then I can just copy this straight over and that gives me the variance for the Atlanta. So not a whole lot difference here. Okay, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, so go back to my data, uh, make that where I can see it, my data analysis, my Z test, two samples for means, because I'm testing to see if the means are different. I say, okay, this first one, I want to se select Seattle. The second variable, I'm selecting all of Atlanta. And again, some of these values were pre-typed in, okay? So let me, let me delete them so you know that I'm actually having to type these values in. I don't know why they don't let you click on this one to select it. But the next thing it asked is the hypothesized mean difference. Well, if there's no difference, that'll be zero. And then I'm actually having to manually type in the 0 0.02394 and then type in the 0 0.02574. I select labels because I actually selected Seattle and Atlanta. If you didn't, then you don't have to select labels. I kind of like to because you'll see it in the output. Then it says, what's your level of significance? Okay, what are you testing your alpha for this hypothesis test? And we're going to do 0 0.05. Sounds good. Where do you want to output the results? That looks good right there. Just click somewhere that you got a bunch of empty space and then say, okay. All right, so let's kind of see what it give us here. So I can see that it gives me the means, and I can kind of see that it looks like there's a pretty big difference in the means, even though the variances, you know, weren't too big of a difference. So in other words, all that meant was um, Atlanta's and Seattle data, pretty much all the gallons of milk are about the same. We have 30 observations. Um, again, our hypothesized mean difference we only care about the two-tail. Why do we only care about the two-tail? Always look at your null, if your null, your alternative. If your alternative is not equal, it's a two-tail. If it's a greater than or a less than, okay, that's a one-tail test, and you'd actually be looking at this value. So I'm looking at this p-value. 
Remember what a p-value is, is the probability that I would believe based off of this sample, what is the probability I really believe that there's a difference here? And there's kind of a, and so my alpha was 0 0.05, there's kind of a funny little thing that people say if the, um, if the p is low, the null must go. So in other words, the probability I check my probability, is it less than my alpha? And yes, it is. So in other words, I'm saying if this is truly, you know, the data that I would expect to get out of the population, what is the probability that I think in this case there is an actual difference? Well, the only way I would not reject the null is if this p-value probability was greater than alpha and it's not. So in other words, I actually will reject the null and I'll say that they are not the same. Based on an alpha level of 0 0.05, there is definitely a difference between the price of milk, gallon of milk in Seattle versus the gallon of milk in Atlanta. And if you redid this test, you know, based on, um, let's say alpha 0 0.01, well, then notice in that case, if you change your alpha value, then in that case, you actually would not reject the null. So as you can see, your alpha depends on that probability. How right do you want to be? Okay. But in this example, the p-value is less than alpha. Therefore, we reject the null.